We have talked about some of our favorite characters over the last little while and all of the awesome feats that they've accomplished, but now it's time to turn to the darker side of Marvel's Ultimates. It's time to talk about some of the most overly gruesome, violent, and just plain weird choices to come out of this edgy line. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today we'll be talking about many of the things that made our skin crawl and made us yell, but why though? As we count down the top 10 worst things in the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Because not all choices are good choices when it comes to storytelling. Get ready to be shocked all over again, and let's get into it. Number 10. Tony and Natasha. Yep, in the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610, Iron Man and Black Widow are an item. But what's worse, Black Widow turns out to be working as a double agent and betrays the team in Ultimates 2. Turns out she was working with the Liberators. This all happens just as Tony and Natasha are preparing to tie the knot. Fortunately, Tony is able to apprehend Natasha, stop her, and turn her over to the authorities. But not before she manages to kill his longtime butler and friend Jarvis. And get all of Hawkeye's family killed and him captured. Tony finds himself distraught, and matters are made even worse after Black Widow's capture and later on her death, when a very intimate and personal video the two made together is leaked to the public. Yikes. Number 9. Actual Cannibal Hulk Hulk in the Ultimate Universe was a much more gruesome version of himself. He was depicted as being a lot more violent, even killing people when he went into a rage. However, this is the Ultimate, so even this more violent and uncontrolled take on his character was not enough. Hulk wouldn't just lose control and kill people, he also had a habit of eating the people he killed as well. I mean, I know he's meant to be a monstrous figure, even on Earth-616, but it feels like they took it a little too far here. Also, what's up with the Ultimate Universe and cannibalism? That's like a thing that just keeps coming up. Number 8. One True Enemy of the Great Charles Xavier Stairs! It was something that hadn't really been done when it came to defeating Professor X, throwing him down some stairs. But there was also probably a reason for this, because I mean, it's just not a thing that needs to happen in the comics. And yet, nothing was considered off the table in Ultimates. This is the moment, by the way, that is featured in our thumbnail for this video, and you might be wondering, hold on, wait a minute, is that Wolverine? throwing Charles down the stairs. And fear not, true believer, at least they didn't steep that low. That That's actually Mr. Sinister. And yeah, he, he looks a little different in the Ultimate Universe. If you're like, but where's his cape and the things? And it looks different here. Number seven, Liberators. Okay, so don't get me wrong. I like the idea of the Liberators. It was more the way that this all went down with them in the end and the way that these international heroes, but villains to the Ultimates, were portrayed. The Liberators were a team of superpowered folks from around the globe who had come together to defeat the Ultimates so as to even the playing field on a global level for the rest of the world. Basically, these characters thought that the USA was becoming too powerful and was messing things up for other countries with their superhero team. This could have been an interesting story, actually, in terms of, like, global, international politics, but instead it just became about how every other country was inferior to the US, with their heroes, the Ultimates, winning the day simply because they were kind of deemed superior. And I'm pretty sure there's a line in there that communicates almost verbatim that sentiment. Number six, Black Panther is Steve Rogers? There is a time that Black Panther is Steve Rogers in these comics. What went down is that basically Black Panther was recruited to the Ultimates but didn't really want to join the team. I mean, that's a whole other story that is pretty weird and problematic kind of made to join the team against his will. On Nick Fury's orders, Black Panther, however, was also not allowed to leave or ever return to his home and see his family in Wakanda. Steve had been training Black Panther and he felt bad for T'Challa, so he decided to basically take Black Panther's place so that he could return home to visit his family. Temporarily, of course. At least, it seemed as though the sub-in was meant to be something temporary. It was implied in the comics that Black Panther would basically go visit his family for a while, and then he'd return to relieve Steve. That isn't what happened, though. And instead, Steve remained as Black Panther until eventually he just went back to being Captain America again, and Black Panther sort of seemingly disappeared off the team without any explanation. He does come back, I think, for one mission, and then he quits. But, um... Yeah, it's also kind of weird that he quits. I guess things changed and he could quit at that point. 
Yeah, it's strange. Another one of the strangest moments in terms of this story is when Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, seemingly recognizes that Steve is actually Black Panther because of the way he moves. Apparently no one else can move like Steve Rogers. Number five, Blob Eats the Wasp. During the events of Ultimatum, a lot of awful things went down. One of those things was the death of the Wasp, Janet Van Dyne. She was for a time the leader of the Ultimates and actually proved to be a quite capable, resourceful, and powerful member of the team, but none of that could save her from the Ultimate Wave. Janet was one of the heroes to be killed during the Ultimate Wave and her body was found by Hawkeye and Giant Man. The worst part wasn't even that she died, but instead was the aftermath of that. Hawkeye and Giant Man found the Wasp's corpse, which was being violently torn apart and eaten by the Brotherhood member, the Blob. Ew. Why? Why so much cannibalism though? Number four, Magneto kills everyone. Normally I wouldn't have a problem with Magneto killing people. After all, he's a major X-Men villain and to have Magneto tell the story, most of the people that he kills, uh, they deserve it. They themselves are usually murderers in some way. It's what makes him such a compelling villain and at times an anti-hero. Right now he's gone full hero in the comics, which means that he really holds people up to high standards in Krokoa when it comes to their law about not killing humans. After all, he knows what it's like to feel justified in disposing of human enemies, and even he is willing to agree that overall it's just a bad idea. So there's really no way of finding justification if that's your crime in Krokoa right now. In Ultimates, Magneto, however, goes from being Professor X's friend and partner in mutant team building and safe space creating, to thinking that mutants are basically better than humans, and believing that humans should either serve mutants or completely be exterminated. Does believing that you belong to a superior race sound like anything else to you? Hmm? Magneto kills billions of people in the pursuit of this belief, which, considering his history as a victim and survivor of the camps in World War II, is pretty shocking and feels out of character. And if you're wondering, well, is that still a thing in Ultimates? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's, that's still established in Ultimates, so yeah. Number three, Wanda and Pietro. Initially, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver had a similar relationship to their 616 counterparts, with Pietro being established as just an overprotective brother. Ultimates then took this a step further, with it being kind of a joke that they were maybe like a little too close, with them even being presented as being overly flirty with one another. But eventually, this was then taken to the next level, a level we probably never should have gone to, where the brother and sister duo were in a full-blown romantic and intimate relationship with one another, and Wolverine even caught them being intimate. And this was something that many fans felt was taking their relationship way, way, way too far. Pietro even is considered a rival when it comes to anyone else competing for Wanda's affections. I love how Earth 1610 was about trying completely different things with characters, and yet, the close siblings were simply just, like, brought too close together. I mean, they could have done something really different with these two and made them, like, two estranged siblings or people that were, like, unrelated to each other. That's something that would really be breaking new ground. Like, where's my, where's my story where they were, like, split up at birth and so they, like, never knew about the other one and then they find their long-lost twin? That could be a cool story. Number two, Ultimates 3. Many of these worst moments that have been laid out before you today come to us from Ultimates 3, which is where the wheels really began to fall off the Ultimates train. I mean, Ultimates 2 also had its problems, but I don't know if there were quite as many as Ultimates 3. Ultimates would later be relaunched by Jonathan Hickman and Asad Ribish in hope to save it, but the damage had already been done. The line was doomed to die and would die during the incursions with the worlds colliding and being rolled into one giant ball of fun that we'd come to know as Doom's Battle World. Of course, then later it'd be brought back, so nah. Number one, Ultimatum. What could possibly be worse than a brother and sister in a romantic relationship and Ultimates 3, where many problematic stories either got worse or got started? How about the thing that simply straight up killed the Ultimate Universe, or at least felt like it tried to, Ultimatum. Ultimatum was the crossover event that caused mass devastation to the universe and the world, wiping out many of the characters that we'd come to know and love, or at the very least tolerate. Jeff Loeb was basically given the green light by Marvel to kill off all characters who were too similar to their Earth-616 counterparts to really shake up the Ultimate Universe. What ended up happening as a result was many people, heroes, and villains dying 
due to their heads being blown up or torn off, having an overly gruesome and violent end. Then there were deaths that were never even shown of major characters who died in the ultimate wave. And finally, there were also tons of characters whose corpses were eaten after or during their death or who ended up tortured to death. It was just an overly violent mess of an event with the death after death, till you became just basically numb to what was going on. Ultimatum is also the event where Magneto decided to basically go nuts and kill billions of people. He would snap Professor X's neck, and then would later have his own head blown off by Cyclops' optic blasts. Like I said, just so many heads being blown off. It makes, it makes my head want to explode. <laughs> What do you think are some of the most violent moments from Ultimates? Which do you think are the worst things to happen in this continuity? And who are your favorite Ultimate characters? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I am your host, Amanda McKnight, saying thank you so much for watching and reminding you to stay nerdy, YouTube.